If T1 is about uh, youth, drugs, uh, defiance, what is, do you think, T2 about? It's about, it's, about, it's about the same thing as the first one. The first one's really about, that's one aspect of masculinity. When it's at its absolute hedonistic, worst, best, I don't know what you'd call it, but it is at its highest moment. And the decline that sets in after that on that front, this one's about, really. Twintig jaar later is het eindelijk zover. De iconische junkiefilm Trainspotting kreeg een vervolg. Getiteld T2 Trainspotting. This is your first ever sequel. Yes. Why did it have to get made? There was something amazing about people's obsession with the characters. And they, over time, they talked to me about them very personally. They knew their names. That doesn't happen very often in movies. When you know the characters' names, you tend to identify them through the personality of the actor. But they would talk very affectionately or violently about Begbie, Spard, Sick Boy, Renton. Four characters they knew. And it felt like, wow, what would happen if you could update them? And the, the, in Britain, there was, when I was a kid, there was a show called The Likely Lads. And the, it was updated seven years later. It was hugely popular, finished. And then they brought it back seven years later with the same characters playing the same actors. And I remember being transfixed by it, thinking, wow, look how much they've changed. Or they're not, but they haven't changed. They're the same. And that always stuck in my mind. And 20 years, as we eventually got to, we tried after 10, felt like a really, like the last chance to do that with these guys. And fortunately, John Hodge produced a screenplay that gave us all hope of making a decent enough film, you know? Hello, Mark. So what you've been up to for 20 years? Did you guys immediately say yes when Danny asked you? Once we read the script, I, yes, I think we, I certainly did. I mean, it, what, the, not to the idea. I mean, uh, the idea of doing it was certainly something that I didn't want to do for a long time. And then slowly started to, as, it, as I, I got in touch with Danny more, and um, started to talk to him about it. Then my my I, my mood about it started to change, I suppose. But it really wasn't until we read the script, because if the script hadn't been good, none of us would have wanted to do it. We'd never have jeopardized how people feel about the original film by making a shite sequel. You know that was I know. so. Yeah. So it was very important. But John managed to. John just sat down and wrote the most extraordinary. Um, it's a beautiful screenplay, and, and uh, would you have done it if any of the other guys would have said no? no? I don't think so. No, you couldn't. You couldn't. Choose life. Choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone somewhere cares. I missed you, man. I missed you too, Spud. Choose looking up old flames, wishing you'd done it all differently. Do you still take heroin? No. And choose watching history repeat itself. 20 years ago, we did a deal. Me, Begbie, Spud, Mark. Mark stole 16,000 pounds. Oh, Franco. Simon. I'm home. Ah! Choose your future. Call the police. What shall I say? Just tell them we're dead. Choose reality TV, standing at the gates of the rich looking in at the Lamborghinis. Choose a zero hour contract, a two hour journey to work and choose the same for your kids, only worse. Until you can see that there'll be nothing left of you to call alive or dead. And then, take a deep breath. I read that you cried when you first read the script, right? Yeah, I certainly did. I did. Why? Because, because we're so close to the, the characters, I suppose, you know? I mean, it's been 20 years and we've kind of lived with these guys for these 20 years. And even though Begbie's kind of, you know, there's very few, if any, you know, redeeming features that he has, he's, a, he's an animal, but he's, he's my animal, you know? And I kind of I felt for him as the script was going by and each page that went by, I thought, oh, this is what a sadness, sad life the guy has, has, has led. And uh, it's, it's a tragic, and I would feel that for, for any 
anyone that had been through that kind of circumstance. And I, and you, McGregor, I know, was felt exactly the same, and I'm, I'm sure you and Brian mm. felt that too. You cried as well. I, 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 I yes, committed. Sh- no, I, I sh- don't cry. I never cry. <laughs> <laughs> He's the worst. Big like baby. <laughs> <laughs> From the convoy, playing with the old toys, instant tomorrows, handcrafted sorrows, all star bravery, imaginary jargon, gripped by the business. Thanks, brother. Yeah! Can't fail again, Mark. Can I need to detox the system? Oh, Spud, detox the system. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's not getting it out of your body that's the problem, it's getting it out of your mind. You are an addict. I think I haven't heard that a hundred thousand times, Mark. You got twelve more steps for my comedy. So be addicted. Be addicted to something else. Well, you're running until I feel sick. Yes, or something else. You've got to channel it. You've got to control it. People try all sorts. Some people do boxing. Boxing? Well, it's just an example. I don't. <laughs> I don't mean you should. So what did you channel into? Getting away. Were you protective of the characters you left 20 years? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, I think the, the audience seems to be as well. Like the, the audience feel personally invested in each of these characters, you know, a real kind of uh, deep kind of ownership almost of, of <laughs> these characters that Absolutely. we play. So you don't own them, the writer doesn't own them, Danny no, doesn't own no, them, they don't we own that's, them. That's right, yeah, exactly. that's what it Danny, feels like. Danny Boyle will absolutely say that as well, that this, this film of Trainspotting 2, this film is for the fans, for sure, I mean, 1,000%, you know, there's no doubt about that. He wants them to kind of take take ownership of the film. And they do, because, you know, with, with you, and it's the same as me, for the last 20 years, wherever I've went, no matter what country I'm in, people will talk about Begbie and they'll say the lines from the film, this, this it had a, such a profound effect on people, which is, you know, it's uh, incredible, really. So, there's this room service guy, right? And he comes into the room, and there is Georgie Best lying on the bed with two Playboy models, three in a bed, champagne, and a wee bit of Charlie, and there's banknotes. But they're lying on the banknotes. Lying on the money? Yes. Why? I don't know, because he has a lot of money, or at least he had a lot of money at the time, anyway. The room service guy, he comes in and he sees this scene that I just described to you and he says, George Best. Greatest footballer of all time. Exactly, the greatest footballer of all time. I have to ask you, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> where did it all go wrong? Where did it all go wrong? Where did it all go wrong? Yeah, George but Best. I think that the room service guy, you know, I think he makes a very good point. No? They're a little sadder and wiser, these men. So you have a different tone. Was it difficult to get the tone right for this one? You try and concentrate, rather than say this is the tone, you try and concentrate on letting the tone emerge out of the characters and out of their um, preoccupations. Um, So it should emerge, really. Obviously, you are guiding it, but it should emerge out of it. You're guiding it in the sense that you wanted it to have some of the tone of the original, because obviously they're still the same characters, they don't change, and one of the themes is that they do try and recreate the past. Like the George Best moment is literally, she says to them, why are you just talking about the past the whole time? Why don't you forget about the past? We, where I come from, we just want to live in the future. We want to forget about the past. So it's bound to have some of that tone, but then you want it to have its own tone, and it is more, it's sadder in a way, both because they can't relive the past as successfully as they hope they might be able to, but also because they do get a wisdom about that they have changed in a way, and they have to acknowledge that, really, that time has moved on. 